What do you do when a control valve is leaking, sticking, or controlling poorly? How do you attack the problem? What do you do first? When you have a control valve problem, you must isolate the problem. For instance, a control valve may not operate at all. Isolate the problem. It may be the actuator or the valve. Let's assume you determine the problem is in the actuator. Isolate the problem further. Is it the piston operator or the positioner that makes the actuator inoperative? Assume you isolate the problem in the positioner. Is the problem a relay or a flapper nozzle? Always isolate the problem or problems in the manner described. Evaluate the problem. Never make hasty adjustments or repairs. You will need a repair and parts manual in order to obtain parts numbers and repair procedures. In addition, the parts book usually contains cutaways and operation descriptions that will aid you in diagnosing and repairing the valve. One very common control valve ailment is leaking packing. This problem is obvious. We need not apply any troubleshooting technique. We will, however, evaluate the problem and think it through before we repair the leak. The solution to the problem is also obvious. Lubricate or tighten the packing. But before you adjust the packing, obtain the operator's permission to enter the area and work on his equipment. Consult the specification sheet. Find out what process material is in the valve. What type protective equipment would you wear if the packing on this valve was leaking excessively? You would wear an air pack. H2S is lethal. Always wear eye protection and gloves when adjusting or lubricating a control valve. A small leak can usually be stopped by putting lubrication into the valve packing. Close the lubricator valve. Remove the bolt. Install the lubricant. Reinstall the bolt. Turn it five or six revolutions. Open the valve. Force the lubrication into the packing by turning the bolt. Do not apply too much pressure with the lubricator bolt. Too much pressure can cause the valve to stick. If possible, stroke the valve so you can be sure the valve is not sticking. Moving the valve stem also distributes the lubricant. Leave the lubricator full of grease. Now work exercise one in your workbook. Sometimes the addition of lubrication will not stop the leak. And some valves do not have lubricators. Under these circumstances, you will have to tighten the packing. Tighten the packing box flange stud nuts evenly.
Do you see anything wrong with this valve? Whoever adjusted this packing didn't pull up on the flange nuts evenly. The result can be a ruined plug stem. Do not apply excess pressure. Over tightened packing can cause the valve to stick, or it can cause hysteresis. Hand tight plus one revolution usually tightens the packing box flange stud nuts sufficiently to prevent packing leaks. Remember, packing should be as friction free as possible. If you have to tighten packing excessively, it will create friction and wear out sooner. So, what do you do if you have to excessively tighten the packing to stop the leak? Or the flange stud nuts tighten all the way down, but the valve still leaks? You will have to add to or better yet, replace the worn or defective packing. First, you will be shown the procedure for adding packing. Then you will be shown the procedure for replacing all the packing. The first method is quicker, but the second method ensures a better job. Before you can remove the packing box flange and gland, the control valve must be blocked out bypassed and depressured. To add to existing packing proceed as follows. Refer to the parts manual and obtain the proper lubricant and packing. Or use the packing and lubricant preferred by your plant. Remove the packing box flange stud nuts. Push the packing box flange and gland as far up the stem as possible. Wire them in place. Remove as much old packing as you can with a packing hook. Or many times you can install a zerk fitting in the lubricator hole and literally pump the old packing out of the valve with grease. It is virtually impossible to remove the lubricating ring with a packing hook. Therefore, you cannot replace the packing beneath the lubricator ring. Inspect the plug stem for signs of wear. If the stem is scored or grooved, or if it is bellied where it runs in the packing, it must be replaced. Add the new packing. V-ring and split-ring packing should fit snugly in the packing box and around the plug stem. If the packing doesn't fit snugly, double-check the part number. You probably have the wrong packing size. Rope packing must be cut to the right length to fit snugly in the packing box. Cut the packing at a 45 degree angle so that when installed the angles will overlap. When you add the packing, stagger the seams 180 degrees. Tap the packing down into the packing box with the packing gland. Add enough packing to fill the packing box and no more. Don't try to force excess packing into the packing box. The best way to repack a control valve is to remove all the old packing and add new packing. To remove all the old packing, you have to disassemble the valve. Look at the parts reference for a Mason Elan 10,000 series control valve. Determine the best way to remove all the packing. Our valve is direct acting, air closed, just like this one. If you remove the body stud nuts,
you can lift the bonnet off the valve body. Before you actually remove the bonnet, peen the bonnet and valve body. This will enable you to orient the bonnet correctly when you assemble the valve. Remove the bonnet. Suppose the valve was an air open type. How could we have removed the bonnet? First, remove the blind head. Now loosen the stem lock nuts. Loosen the plug stem from the actuator stem. Remove the stem lock nuts and indicator disc. Remove the plug. Inspect the trim for signs of wear. Replace or repair the trim if necessary. Push out all the packing. Place new gaskets in the valve body. Reinstall the bonnet. Add the new packing. Be sure to install the proper number of packing rings below the lubricating ring. Apply three PSI to the actuator. Screw the plug stem into the actuator stem until you can feel the friction caused by the plug hitting the seat. Do not turn the plug stem while the plugs are seating. This will gall both seats and plugs. Now work exercise two in your workbook.